PK. Mr Chair, I'm very pleased to take a call on the New Zealand Qualifications Authority. Can I first by start by acknowledging the wonderful ministers um, that are responsible for education, Minister Heke Prata and Minister Joyce. Uh, they're doing an outstanding job, so I'm very pleased to be um, Chair of Education and Science Select Committee. Chair, can I just say, look, there are three core goals for the New Zealand Qualifications Authority in the future. The, the first one is to ensure that we have a clearer system and we promote recognition of learner achievement. The second is to ensure that we actually have increased confidence in the system. And thirdly, that actually for our young people we have more portable qualifications across the world. And can I start by saying we have to talk about the base that we started from, Mr. Mr Chair, because actually we can't talk about the future for the New Zealand Qualifications Authority unless we acknowledge the very difficult situation that we inherited. We had 16 and 17 year olds dropping out of school with fewer and lo lower literacy. We had a number of degree level graduates that didn't improve between 2000 and 2008 despite huge funding increases. We had low completion rates for courses. We had no incentives for tertiary institutions to improve their performance. We had a bloated qualifications register. And one of the core jobs of the New Zealand Qualifications Authority in the future is about reducing this number of qualifications. Mr Chair, uh, in 2008, there were 6,000 qualifications in New Zealand for a country with a working age population of 2.2 million people. That is appalling and under our government there is a review. Our goal is by 2014 to ensure that, that those qualifications are down to 1,200. To give you an example, in the area of hairdressing for instance, there were 72 qualifications. We'll be getting that down to nine. Um, we spend $4.3 billion in tertiary education, and if we are going to achieve the kind of results through New Zealand Qualifications Authority that we need to achieve, we need to do a whole lot of other things. One of those other things is about improving financial performance of universities. There are 12,000 more core tertiary places funded under our government. We are investing more in engineering, science and research-led learning. We have a target of 55% of 25 to 34 year olds with a qualification level of four and above. Well, Mr Speaker, the opposition say another target, but what we know is that we are working from an appalling record under the last Labour government. And secondly, we are also, and this was mentioned by the Minister, this was mentioned by the Minister, we have some very disadvantaged people in our country and we have unfortunately some very difficult, difficult issues around Māori and Pacific Island education and what we are interested in is actually having accountability and that's what targets are about, that's why we have them. We're able to focus Crown entities and other um, uh, entities such as New Zealand Qu uh, Qualifications Authority to actually say we want accountability, we want some targets. This isn't about pouring more money into the system, this is about ensuring there is clarity and there is a simpler system for New Zealanders to be able to go out across the world with decent qualifications. And that's what this entity is now tasked with, unlike under the last Labour government, whereby there were low completion rates, whereby we had 16 and 17 year olds dropping out. It's also, Mr Speaker, about ensuring that we know through schemes like Youth Guarantee that some people don't suit class classrooms, Mr Speaker. And for those people, we are investing more than 100 billion in the Youth Guarantee scheme. And can I say that this would only be that we would only be able to do this with the support of ministers like Hepi Parata and the Honourable Stephen Joyce, who have fought very hard in the education budget to increase our education budget over every single year, 512 million, and that's because of the Honourable Hepi Parata. Um, and that is a tribute to this government that we are investing more than ever before in the education portfolio. What we can also see is that we need to have more confidence in our private training establishments. That's why over four years, 29.5 million to reward completion and innovation. But it's also about acknowledging that we are pouring more than many other countries into our student loan allowances system. <coughs> and that is, that is way out of step with many other um, nations, 41% I think, or 42% of our total uh, tertiary 
budget is on student support. You compare that to Australia at 31 per cent. If we want to get the kind of outcomes for young New Zealanders in the future, we have to shift funds into things like research, into things like training, not just in student support. And that's been a big focus of this government. Again, um, it's about incentives in the system. So if we look at what... Thank you, Mr Chair. Members, the question is that the report of the Education and Science Committee on the 2010-11 Financial Review of New Zealand Qualifications Authority be noted. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I understand that the next entity members wish to debate is the Children's Commissioner. The question is that the report of the, of the Social Services Committee on the 2010-11 Financial review of the Children's Commissioner be noted. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I understand that the next entity members wish to debate is the Families Commission. The question is that the report of the Social Services Committee on the 2010 11 financial review of the Families Commission be noted. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair.